My name is Cam Wallone from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. Hi, my name is Jonathan Howard. I'm an anarchist, and I'm currently uh, studying urban planning. It's uh, my first time on News from the Underground, and I look forward to helping out Cal with his um, videos from uh, here forward with any uh, topics that include uh, sustainable energy practices or transportation planning. Uh, so if anybody's out there still wondering who's going to build the roads, uh, it's going to be me with, yeah. <laughs> with the help of our community and um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so yeah, this is our first time out co-hosting with Johnny and uh, we'll start off with some information coming out, I guess, uh, well, this week. Again, last time I mentioned that we have a new events calendar on the website. We're also accepting new submission. So if you have any writings you'd like to share on your personal stories, on analysis, or your thoughts on freedom, please share it with us. Uh, we've also fixed a Bitcoin address, so if people enjoy your, your writing, people can tip you as well. And so yeah, please send, it up, uh, send us your submissions and uh, we'll be gladly to read them and uh, start posting them. And so with that, let's we'll start with the news from underground. A huge solar plant opens, facing doubts about its future. The Envapa solar plant stretches over more than five square miles of the Mojave Desert. Almost 350,000 mirrors the size of garage doors tilt toward the sun with an ability to energize 140,000 homes. The plant, which took almost four years and thousands of workers assembly, assembling millions of parts to compete, to complete officially open on Thursday the first electric generator of its kind, and it could also be its last. Since the project began, the price of rival technologies has plummeted, and senses have begun to disappear, and the appetite among investors for mammoth solar farms have waned. I don't think we're going to see large-scale solar thermal plants popping up five at a time every year in the U.S. in the long term. It's just not going to work that way, said Matthew Feinstein, a senior analyst of Lux Research. The Avonpah project was conceived in the early days of the Obama administration, when dreams of creating a thriving renewable energy industry were backed by the federal government's financial support. You mean uh, stealing property and trying to fund this, right? Uh, Avonpah received a $1.6 billion federal loan guarantee, without which it would not have gone forward, the developer said. Ernest Moniz, the Energy Secretary, toured a tower and said the plant was an example of how the loan program was set off a political maelstrom after the prominent failure of one of its borrowers, the solar panel makers of Solyndra, was supposed to work. You guys remember that? A couple of years ago, Obama was trying to promise uh, green um, renewable uh, sources coming, uh, coming from uh, California, I believe. Yeah, a $535 million taxpayer loan, uh, which just went you know, bottom up. Yeah, and, uh, and of course there's a lot of, uh, you look at the, the background of the places where uh, the government subsidizes particular areas, uses resources where it would normally not have gone to uh, and in a free and voluntary market, um, creates a lot of this, uh, this c catastrophe. Um, yeah. Especially when you find some of the connections to a uh, cylinder, you find out somebody who owned actually 36.7% of the company was a key campaign donator yeah. to Obama. Uh, his name was uh, Doris Kaiser. Major Obama contribution. So you'll find a lot of interesting uh, connections when it comes to government subsidized um, companies. Yep. Uh, and of course, what ended up happening with uh, Solyndra, they went bankrupt. Yeah. yeah, a lot of it kind of just seems um, that uh, these companies are kind of bidding for these construction projects. What it doesn't really matter what they are. Um, hey, well, let's go green. You know, the public will support it. Yeah. Um, of course. Uh, and then without doing the proper research necessary, um, anyone who kind of knows about uh, sustainable energy and, and, and background on solar and, and wind and these these typically they tend to be kind of decentralized um, power generation. Uh, techniques as opposed to centralized so they tried to you know go backwards they tried to apply you know the solar technology to you know widespread plant generation and what happened is um, 1.6 billion dollars was spent to basically provide the same amount of electricity that 20 percent of the amount of electricity that Lake Anna you know to get kind of a perspective on that um, amount of power 140,000 homes sounds like a lot but uh, um, and it could potentially power more with the right energy conservation techniques. Yeah. So it could have been, you know, a very successful thing if done properly. Right. 
Uh, but of course, in the Obama administration, there's no scientists there. They're not business owners. They're not people who can make these uh, these complex decisions as you would as a regular business. Uh, so of course, they're going to give away you know your money that they steal from you and try to, to try to try to pretend to play business um, by you know funding a lot of these corporations, funding a lot of these businesses. And, and in effect, what it does is it creates a massive um, uh, well, I guess imbalance in the market. Uh, especially with green technology, especially all that money, all those resources, all that investment could have been uh, openly available for people if they didn't have uh, these state-backed companies that could be available to, I don't know, to, to fund other companies. <laughs> um, you know, that, that what, what, $500 million for Solyndra could have gone to, to somewhere else. But of course, the government, they're not keen and being efficient and, um, and actually understanding supply and demand, and so they can make the, the right efficient choices for that. Uh, so you find a lot of uh, distortions in the market, and and as an effect, um, what ends up happening actually a couple of years ago. Um, so for a while ago, solar panels were very cheap, and so the U.S. found that to be problemsome. And so in retaliation, because it there's um, they, they have their own key investors, you have the people here in the United States that they get their political funding from, and of course they're losing business due to to competition. Which is not a bad thing because for us that means it's cheaper solar panels. Uh, mm -hmm. But of course, in retaliation, the the, the red tariff at China over a thirty percent tariffs on uh, some of the particular solar panel uh, components, and so what does China do in response? They also throw a tariff back on the U.S. And so it's been kind of going back and forth for a while now, and causing a lot of uh, people to lose their business, lose their jobs, um, and that's what government does. Um, and everything that government sets off to do and thinks that it's going on a righteous path to fix, the opposite always occurs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one of the quotes in the article was also uh, one of the justifi justifications for why this federal, you know, loan program for green tech was in effect. One of the justifications was it needed; it's there to kickstart uh, the private sector. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of a lot of areas you could kickstart kickstart the private sector, but you weren't stealing their, I guess, their their wealth to begin with. Well. And then we're going to demonstrate this really bad experiment, and, and you know it, got, it goes bottom up, and then this is going to you know yeah. eventually convince yeah. someone to invest. Right. So yeah. So it's such a negative social distortion. So it's negative viewpoints in the in the community, um, perceiving misperceiving that it maybe perhaps is not viable, uh, maybe perhaps it can't work. Um, so it's just this, I guess, psychological negative attachment towards a lot of these things. Uh, and that's, of course, when you look at the trace roots of it, government was involved to begin with with that. So again, you'll find the common, inner, common denominator for all our social problem and ills, you can point it at the state. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to move towards uh, maybe some of the, the environmental impacts of you know solar and uh, you know other green technologies coming down the pipe. But uh, here's an article um, about the the same uh, solar generating uh, s uh, system field in Uvinpa and uh, in Arizona. Um, after years of regulatory tangles around the impact on desert wildlife, the Uvinpa. Solar electric generating system opened on Thursday, but environmental groups say that nearly 350,000 gigantic mirrors are generating 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which are killing and singeing birds, so burning them as they're flying, literally. So, uh, according to compliance documents released by developer BrightSource Energy last year, dozens of birds were found injured at the site. Dozens. Birds. Not as many as uh, you thought it was, just a dozens. Yeah. I mean, it was just still a travesty, of course. Um, yeah. It's something we should know about. But uh, when you compare the pros and cons of fossil fuel and nuclear uh, energy generation uh, and the Im impacts that they have on the environment, where they actually kill people and millions of different <laughs> species and they forever contaminate the environment. Um, I have a you know a lot of trouble uh, being convinced that you know to to get stay away from green technology and and obviously if the same amount of money that was invested in green tech as it were in you know big fossil fuel interests and, and nuclear interests uh, I'm sure we would be able to find a way to make a magical bird uh, net or something yeah uh, you know kind of like the nuclear missile. Project. 
touch it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, if these if these environments really care about the the environment, then the last thing they would want is government involvement in, in any interaction of our lives, right? I mean, you, of course, you forget that government doesn't care about you, doesn't value you as a human being. So what makes you think that they value the environment? Um, remember, the United States alone has murdered over 30 million people since World War II. Uh, also remember statistically that you're most likely to be murdered by a police officer on the monopoly on security than by a terrorist, yes. right? Uh, again, numbers are out there, statistics are out there, you know, the United States in cages dehumanizes more people of its own over a million more than any other totalitarian states in the world. So what makes you think they care about the environment, especially when there are, what, over 900 bases in the world creates so much pollution to begin with, right? So if you really, if they really want to target um, I guess agencies that destroy the environment, then you should be targeting the state. A uh, couple other things I wanted to say about uh, the, the amount of research that is going into some of these projects. Uh, and even in here in our home state in Virginia, Dominion, they're kind of dragging their feet on some of these uh, projects, when, offshore wind and, and, and solar. Um, they're called pilot programs. When over in Europe and even in New Jersey, uh, the leader in solar tech, um, they're way, way ahead of us, light years ahead of, uh, of Virginia, and yet we're still researching. And even, uh, you know, this, as this article continues to say, there's a, currently a two-year study being conducted on the plants' effects on the birds, the solar plants' effects on the birds, um, when similar plants like this already exist in Spain and, and other countries. So kind of, you know, questionable, you know, why we're, we're even talking about uh, this at this point when we could just be deferring, you know, what yeah. the private market probably would be doing. Um, but it's, again, it's just to create this, you know, effect that w there is a problem and we need government to fix it, right? Yeah. Government created those problems to begin with. Remember, they subsidized those uh, corporations there. So, yeah, they're the last people I look and seek. Well, I guess I'll never seek such an agency for help to begin with. Okay. So the uh, what this this site is located 45 miles southwest of Las Vegas, has virtually unbroken sunshine throughout the year, and uh, so it's kind of funny how they say, well, it, it's near transmission lines that carries power to consumers. But I figured if you were a consumer, you wouldn't be dealing with an agency that's stealing your money to begin with to to found to found uh, the business to, uh, to start with, right? So I wouldn't say that they're consumers. You know, they're they're victims of uh, of theft through taxation through a lot of the. Uh, loans that they get at very low interest rate costs that, of course, are not available to anyone else, right? All backed and funded and uh, supplied by you, you know, the victim of uh, government theft and extortion. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of startling uh, things to, to examine, a lot of uh, things, especially when you hear green power, a lot of the stuff can be effective. Um, there are, especially like putting it on top of your rooftops in your homes. There's been a lot of cases, for example, near uh, Los Angeles in California, a lot of people, hundreds of people trying to live off the land trying to live away from the city grid and trying to live sustainably, growing their own uh, gardens, um, you know, developing their, their own sustainable resources. Uh, wind power. Wind power, yeah, yeah, solar power. But of course comes the zoning administrators, the thing they call the uh, nuisance abatement team. Yes. Um, I guess they find humans to be a nuisance, of course. Again, they don't care about you. And so what they do is that they examine these properties, these people who live unto themselves, they don't want to bother anyone who, who, who thought and were misled to believe that they were free and had also the freedom to be left alone, but that's not the case. And of course, uh, city officials the, uh, come, would come out there and say, sir, that shed is uh, out of regulations. Uh, you know, where's your permit for that? You can't build that. You're gonna have to take that away. You have to take that apart. And all of a sudden, say, well, you just can't live out here. You can't be free. Yes. Uh, come back to the city, pay your taxes. Um, and that's what's been happening out in California. Um, I mean, do a Google search for a lot of this stuff, and that's when it's up happening when you have government. Um, you know, as long as government exists, no matter where you run, where you hide, where you, where you think you might find your fantasy uh, Noah's Ark zone away from government, as long as it exists, you'll never have the freedom to be left alone. And yeah, and uh, it's uh, another course I'm currently taking, uh, land use law. It talks a lot about uh, nuisance law and uh, how zoning, uh, the Standard Zoning Act and Standard Planning Act kind of came into being, and we can talk a lot more. So definitely, <laughs> definitely stay stay tuned. Uh, there's a lot of you know great great topics. Uh, I also want to you know dive a little bit deeper into what's going on here in our own state and how you know you're limited you know and 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 as far as you know setting up solar panels on your own house or even a community you know where you could share maybe your house isn't ideal for solar um, but someone down the street is and you can cooperate but that's currently 
you know, technically illegal and, and whatnot. So yeah, and we can yeah, like places in uh, Spain, for example, you have to pay tax if you collect your own solar energy. So and so they they spend out they send out inspectors to see who's uh, collecting this uh, this raw energy that this, this comes with abundant from the sun, right? Mm -hmm. Like in Maryland, where you have to pay tax because rain falls on your property. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's uh, pretty much the thing about. Yeah, I think that wraps it up, and definitely you know, stay tuned for for more. <laughs> thank you for uh, I guess our I guess urban uh, advisor here, yes. and thank you for watching. Share and subscribe if you can, please. See you guys at the victory party. Take good care.